Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome, dear listeners, to another episode of the History AI Podcast. I'm your host, Chuck, and with me is the incredible Marco. Hey, everyone. Glad to be back with yet another exciting dive into the depths of history. And today, Chuck, we have quite an interesting figure to discuss. Absolutely, Marco. Today, we are taking a time leap back to ancient Rome to explore the life, achievements, and legacy of the Emperor Alexander Severus. A man with many faces, an emperor, a reformer, and a very young ruler. Our young rulers. Always a recipe for some historical drama, wouldn't you say, Chuck? Oh, absolutely. So, without further ado, let's set our time machines to the Roman Empire, shall we? All right. Arriving in ancient Rome, Alexander Severus steps into the limelight of our historical stage. Born Marcus Julius Gessius Bassianus Alexianus in around 208 AD, he came from a lineage that was, let's say, quite interesting. He sure did, Chuck. His grandmother, Julia Misa, was an incredibly powerful woman who orchestrated the ascent of her two grandsons to the imperial throne. An absolute shrewd and clever power player of her time. That's right. Alexander's cousin, Elagabalus, was placed on the throne first, but his shall we say erratic and controversial rule didn't sit well with the Roman elite, or the military for that matter. To put it lightly, the tales of Elagabalus are wild, to say the least. But that's a story for another podcast. He was eventually assassinated, and young Alexander Severus, only around 14 years old at the time, was elevated to the throne. Can you imagine Marco, being emperor at 14? At that age, I was struggling to conquer algebra. Oh, the trials and tribulations of teenagehood. But despite his age, Alexander demonstrated a remarkable aptitude for ruling. Known for his moral character and administrative skill, he was often referred to as the last of the good emperors of Rome. We'll get back to our story in a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor. From the mind behind the History AI podcast comes an electrifying journey into the past. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Dive into a tale where Benjamin Franklin, America's beloved inventor, takes an unexpected journey through time. But with his leap, he unleashes a powerful ripple. Now, with dark forces lurking in the shadows, harnessing this energy to shatter and enslave the world, it's a race against time. Will Franklin fix the future? Or will history rewrite itself? Uncover the secrets. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Time has never been more fragile. On Amazon presale now, all right, so where were we? Ah yes, Alexander's aptitude as a ruler. He was a man of many talents, with a particular affinity towards peaceful management and diplomacy. Absolutely. He was renowned for implementing policies that favored intellectual pursuits, ensuring that scholars were respected and well rewarded during his reign. Unlike many of his predecessors, Alexander adopted a more peaceful and diplomatic approach, especially towards the Germanic tribes and the Persians. His beliefs in diplomacy were not merely politically motivated. Alexander was also known for his religious tolerance, respecting and accommodating various faiths within the empire. Ah yes. He respected Christianity and even kept images of Jesus and Abraham, alongside other revered historical figures, in his private space for inspiration. Oh Marco, could you say he was the original collector of inspirational quote wall art? I suppose so Chuck. However, despite all his positive attributes, his reign was not without challenges. His preferential treatment towards his mother and her involvement in state affairs was a source of constant criticism and tension within the administration. Yes, and when it comes to the military, although he sought peace, his reign was not devoid of conflicts. He dealt with revolts, invasions, and internal discontent. It's ironic, isn't it? A peaceful emperor having to fend off so much conflict. His desire to maintain peaceful relations with foreign entities, particularly the Sasanian Persians, wasn't shared by all, especially his military. Eventually, this discontent among the troops would lead to his downfall. In 235 AD, while campaigning against Germanic tribes, Alexander was assassinated by his own troops, who were discontented by his handling of the military and his diplomatic stance towards the Persians. A tragic end to a ruler who aimed for peace and prosperity. 
Alexander Severus' death is often regarded as the starting point of the crisis of the 3rd century, a period of chaos, civil war, and decay in the Roman Empire. His legacy though lives on, providing a glimpse into a reign that, despite its trials sought to uphold moral and administrative virtue in a time of ever-increasing decay within the empire. And it gives us all a reminder, that despite being in positions of power, the complexity of political, social, and military relations is a tightrope that all leaders must tread carefully. Beautifully said Marco. And with that dear listeners, we draw our journey to a close. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the life and legacy of Alexander Severus with us. Don't forget to like, rate, and share the History AI podcast with fellow history buffs. Your support keeps our time machine running. Until our next historical adventure, I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Signing off.